So here we are. It's early morning. March 22nd, I believe, maybe 23rd. I'm in a lovely little floodplain here. This is exactly what I like to see for Morel's large tulip poplar here. Underneath the tulip poplars are various shrubs and understory trees like invasive English privet and other saplings of various species of hardwood trees. These trees are persimmon, I believe, these skinnier ones. More large, mature tulip poplars in the background and underneath just a very impenetrable thicket of privet and I believe some species of aster. We had a pretty hard frost this morning. I woke up to ice all over the ground and this is the same day that I had a hard freeze last year that really zapped a bunch of the morels. And this is an area that in my last video, I was talking about how a lot of my spots got flooded. This area had severe flooding. All of this sand that's been deposited down here was not there at the beginning of the winter. And that's probably like a foot of sand on top of stuff. So I have a feeling it will have a detrimental impact. But even though the flooding was pretty bad up this way, I start looking in this thicket here and not only do I see very nice, fresh, large morels, they are not frozen at all. There's ice on plants right around here. You can see the ice here. These are frozen. The morels can withstand some pretty cold mornings. And uh, yeah, these are not frozen at all. They feel perfect. A little bit dirty. When there's been flooding, they tend to have a good bit more grit, but I'll clean that off. I see. There's another one hiding in here that's super fresh and definitely coming with me. And as we go a little further back into the thicket, I see at least one more here. Really nice. This one is a little bit frozen, but I'll dehydrate it and it should be okay. And I don't see any more right around here. But this is the type of habitat that when you're looking for them, these very dense thickets of English privet. That's not a bad way to start the morning right there. I'm still hunting the same kind of habitat and uh, I am seeing morels. There's one right down here. So far a lot of them are very small still and so maybe another week before they are starting to get in full swing, but quite often when it's this way, if I look around, I will find flushes where maybe there are colonies of genetics that tend to fruit a little earlier. So we will continue on. More thickets here. 
This is perfect. Very dense. And you see the light is really low and not bright. I like to hunt early morning as often as possible. I find it much easier to spot the mushrooms in this type of lighting. By the time noon sun is directly overhead, I pretty much have a very hard time spotting even large morels. They have great camouflage and Here's one. Always be careful as you're walking back not to trample on any smaller mushrooms, especially early in the season. It's very easy to mess up spots that would be great if you go trampling all around and killing the primordia and pins. I see a few more back in here. These are still small. I'm gonna leave those and I will come back maybe in a few days and really get up in this thicket and hopefully take a basket home. Still deep in the thickets. I'm into some areas with really large privet. These have to have been here for years to get this size. They're usually nowhere near that big, but uh, when I can find large privet like that, underneath canopies of suitable tree species like poplar, and here is more really big privet here. Huge, well that's actually I believe a young poplar tree intertwined with a large privet, more large privet here, and sort of a bonsai-like privet back there. But this is the type of area that I slow way down when I'm in here. I do not want to trample because it's oftentimes these types of areas that I find my best most productive patches and as I'm talking I see mature blonde or yellow morel. This is Morcella Americana which is the North American yellow morel and this is what I'm looking for right here and in areas like this that's a young tulip poplar. That's a privet. This is a privet. That's a privet back there. You can see I'm in so thick you almost can't see the canopy, but it is mostly tulip poplar with some other species as well. And I see another really nice big mushroom right back here. Always be careful and watch where you step so you don't trample any that you're not spotting. And I'm getting caught on briars here. But yeah, this, oh, there's two of them here. You can see the other one hiding. They love to hide up in this undergrowth of second and tertiary plants. Man, those are fully mature. So obviously, like I was talking about, it seems like clusters of certain genetics may like to fruit a little earlier. Or maybe there's just a more suitable microclimate under this thicket, but at any rate, I see another one right here.
and I'm plucking these just because I'm filming, it doesn't make any difference, but normally I do like to cut them so that I don't carry dirt into my basket, but that's what you carry your little brush or your mushroom knife for. And I always thoroughly clean my mushrooms before they go into my basket. And then I cover them with a cloth while I'm carrying them so that I don't get twigs and other detritus into my basket to destroy my hard-won culinary delights. More of the same. Floodplain, privet, thicket, tulip poplars surrounding the area and if it ever gets to where I seem like I'm beating a dead horse with the um, habitat that's because it took me years and years to be able to reliably find these and when I first learned all of the information I could get was from different parts of the country and in those parts of the country, they seem to have, I guess, better climate and everything for these mushrooms. And so a lot of the information I was getting did not really apply to me here in the southeastern United States. And it was a very long, hard process to learn how to find these mushrooms. and this is the type of habitat that I find them in. So if it ever seems like I'm reiterating over and over and over again the exact same things, that's because I am. Because I've looked in all sorts of habitats here. And these are the ones that I find them in. And they are so hard to see, but... I spotted a couple just a second ago. There they are. One of them almost looks past prime, but this is a nice one that's big enough for me to take. Yeah, that one's a little, little done. I will leave it. I think I saw, yes, there's a few more right here. Really nice. I love finding them early in the season because they're pretty much all fresh and perfect. It's, I don't see any more right here. Very happy to see that a lot of the flooding does not seem to have completely shut these areas down. Let's carry on. Something that I don't hear talked about very often in videos about mushroom hunting is the importance of looking behind you as you're moving through. There's a little rabbit back in there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's just hanging out in its little shelter. That's a large rabbit. But I just walked past this privet here and fighting your way through brambles, it gets a little hectic and you don't look everywhere that you should sometimes. But uh, I look behind me as I'm walking past and what do we have here? Really nice. Perfect, fresh. And there's another one. And there's not always large amounts. So sometimes it can just be one or two in an area but looking behind you, always look back at 
where you've been. It may lead you to finding really good flushes. Look in all directions, but always look behind you every few feet. I'm back at the big old dead tree from my last video. I think this tree should be called the giving tree. Last year it produced a huge flush and this year it was the first place that I found any morels, but wow, I see some large, really nice mushrooms here. Look at this. I only see two so far. I see another one hiding back there, but these are the, this is the best mushroom of the trip so far, by far. Wow. And another one. And you probably can't see, but there's at least one more right there. And I have a feeling there will be quite a few more around the tree here. Let's see how big. It's completely fresh. That, what a beauty. And this one. in here. I see several. There's one here. And here. our way around find a better way I in made there it back in Let's here see what else is back here at the giving, giving tree. tree a little closer and as I came I looked backwards and right there there's a really nice mushroom I missed which I will go back and get after but as I moved into here I see There's a twin, lucky twin, right there. And more here. That one is past prime, but nice clusters on this side of the tree. I see more back over there. Let's get this twin. Pull it up. Beautiful. And some people might find it controversial to pluck mushrooms, but there is nothing wrong with plucking mushrooms if you understand how the organism reproduces and grows. Uh, there's absolutely no reason to worry about it. I don't normally do it, but like I was saying earlier, that's more for the sake of just keeping my harvest clean. It doesn't hurt the organism whatsoever to pluck mushrooms. I may get some comments stating otherwise, but studies have been done on this. Some more nice ones here. That one's a little dried out. And I'll go back and get this one I spotted from 
looking backwards, it's right over here. I don't see any more over there. see what we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in one little area. Not as good as last year at this tree, but I'm telling you, old trees can be a gold mine. My battery died on my GoPro and I did not have any extras with me, so I'll be finishing this video with my phone, but uh, I've come upon this dead, really rotted tree. But here at the base of it, it's a nice, more fresh yellow morels. And I wasn't really expecting much in the way of great foraging today, but uh, Man, it's actually been a really good morning walk. Certainly cannot complain. And a lot of the flooded areas that I thought might have been toast this year seem to be producing regardless whether or not they will produce as much as last year. Still remains to be seen, but... I don't see any more right here, but I've got a good, good little haul going for just a short morning walk. Any day like that is a great day. Thanks for checking out another video and um, I'll see you on the next one.